I saw a request to do a video on the solar wind indicator and how you could use it in Strategy Builder. I haven't been checking the YouTube comments. I actually don't work for Ninza. I'm just a Ninza customer. I've been a customer with them for about a little over four years, I think. I had an opportunity to make some videos in exchange for some uh, other indicators that I didn't have yet and I, I don't have a YouTube account, I don't do social media and I'm not available for any kind of personal trading recommendations or anything like that. I'm just giving my reviews on the Ninja indicators that I own and that I like. That being said, if you have any questions about particular indicators, uh, definitely just reach out to Ninza. They've got great customer service. They've always helped me when I've ever had a question about any of their indicators. Regardless of all that, I thought I would do a quick video on just one potential way you could use the Ninza Solar Wind here with the built-in Ninja Trader Strategy Builder. Here I've got a system that I really like to use. I did a previous video on that. These bands are the moving average crossover from Ninza and this trend indicator here, this is the solar wind indicator, but I've taken away a lot of the features. This is just a very baseline setup that I like to use just to keep my chart clean. But as you can see, this is from today, September 26th, Monday. This is the New York open price action. You know, we got a bearish trend print on our solar wind, but this moving average band is keeping us only looking for longs. It comes right down to near the 200 EMA, and then we get a bullish trend on the solar wind, and obviously went up most of the morning here. It also kept us out of this little blip here. So I'll show you how I'd automate something like this in Strategy Builder. So I've got some just standard inputs and variables, a, a target, a stop loss, and a lot size. Here I'm only looking for trades between 9.30 and 10.30 a.m. That's the time frame that I like to trade. You just go to time, time series, and then you want it greater or equal to a time value. So greater than 9.30 a.m. And same thing, time series less than the time value of 10.30 a.m. You don't have to put the time series on there. I just like to do that because that's basically the only time that I ever trade. So since we're looking at longs, I'll show you the long conditions here. Our first condition, this is for the solar wind. So under price, we want the close of the current bar, zero bars ago. Uh, the close we want to cross above. And then we go into our indicator section over here and we pick the Ninza Solar Wind. Down here you'll see a bunch of value plots. Uh, there's the trend signal, the trailing stop, and the trend vector. The trend vector is just this main line that turns green and yellow and red. We want the trailing stop. That's this little red dotted line here. So when we have a close above this red dotted line, you see the trend turns bullish on the solar wind. So that's the condition we want to mimic. The close crosses above the trailing stop line on the solar wind. And then one other condition, uh, under price, we want the close of the current bar to also be greater than the EMA. Under the indicators you choose EMA and I've got a period of 200 and that's this black line. I want price to also be above this black line and that'll keep us out of you know these little blip short trades. So the only way it's going to enter into a trade is if price closes above the trailing stop line and price is also above this 200 EMA. So if all these conditions are met, we want to enter a long. Just go under order management and enter long position. 
I've, I've got it set to draw a line. You can set it to whatever you like for the marker. And then you just uh, right click, you know, copy there, right click, paste here. Same, same exact conditions for the shorts. The only thing we do with the shorts is instead of across above, we do the close crossing below the solar wind value plot trailing stop. And the same for the EMA, we just change the one parameter on there. The close is less than the 200 period EMA. And we enter a short. Uh, I've got a profit target and a stop loss condition. Just add a condition. Uh, you can choose a profit target and a stop loss there. So next we can go to our strategy analyzer and see the best settings we might want to use. Go to the optimization. I'm going to test out a NASDAQ one minute chart. I want to be looking for 20 to 30 points here. So 80 to 120 ticks. And stop loss, I'm not a big fan of preset stop loss and take profits. I like to put my take profit and stop loss wherever they need to be, just depending on price action and support and resistance areas. So I'm going to give it some room to breathe and see, see what kind of optimal settings we might get. I'm just going to test the last two weeks, last 10 days of trading so I don't have to wait forever for this to analyze everything. So September 13th through the 26th, which is today, it's 10 trading days. I'm going to look for the max net profit. For the optimizer, I always use the genetic and I changed the generation size to 50 and the generations to 10. It just makes it go a little bit quicker. It doesn't give you as much of a complete in-depth review, but it gives you kind of a broad overview of what's possible here. So I just clicked run. We'll see what kind of results we get. So our best result was $4,800 profit. 82% profitable over two weeks trading one NASDAQ contract. Uh, the winning settings were basically a 20 point take profit and a 40 point stop loss. So not the best ratio. I'd probably, uh, probably do some more optimization there to have a better risk reward ratio. But, but it does give you a general idea to see how this strategy performed the last two weeks. I also don't rely on strategy analyzer results. They are notoriously not accurate all the time. So anytime you do a strategy analyzer test, you definitely want to run it in market replay to see if it actually works out. Like you want to load the same amount of data from the past two weeks and then you just want to let it play for the whole time and see if all these trades actually get executed. A good portion of the time it's just completely different results. So here I've got market replay going. Uh, we're coming into the New York Open today on September 26th. I'm going to add the solar wind strategy that I just made. Uh, my target's going to be 80. My stop's going to be 160. going to enable this. I'm going to speed this up and we'll see if it actually triggers the trade like it's supposed to. All right, it's 9.30, so our strategy should be on. So if we get a break above this solar wind stop line up here and our price is above this 200 EMA, we should be entered into a trade automatically. 
All right. So our strategy is working. It automatically put me into this trade right here. As soon as this bar closed above the solar wind trailing stop here, these this little red dotted line, we've got our stop loss and take profit that automatically printed. And we hit our target right away of 80 ticks. So that's just one of the many ways that you could use a Ninza indicator with the strategy builder. If you own this indicator and you have some other questions about how to use it with strategy builder, if there's something in particular that you're trying to do and you can't figure out, I highly recommend that you just reach out to Ninza on their website. There's links below that you can click on. Uh, just go to their website and email them. If you have questions about how to do something in particular, They've got great customer service. I'm sure they'd be happy to help you. If you are also a Ninza customer and you own some of their indicators and you've got some creative ways to use them and you wanted to make some videos, I would definitely suggest reaching out to them as well. I'm sure they'd appreciate another viewpoint. You know, someone that trades different markets, different time frames. Like I don't like trading Rinko charts or a lot of the other chart styles and I pretty much only trade the NASDAQ and sometimes the ES very occasionally. I'm sure it'd be great to see the way a lot of other people use these indicators too.